Okay, I just got done connecting all my squares and hiding my tails. And when hiding your tails, I recommend that you use them to close the spaces that you have here. When uh, connecting here, then you sew, there's spaces here. So use that uh, extra string when you begin. When you hide your tails, you can pull it back here and just tie a knot. A loop. I just I put it through here, and I made a loop through this um, this way, and then I just kind of did like I did with my um, tails earlier, and just pulled it through to make kind of a knot there and close that space. But you can do it however you like. But I would recommend using those long tails to. Uh, close the spaces up in between to make a nice look. So you have these cool borders on the side and the back you have this like um, cool little I don't know maze looking thing going on back there looks really cool between the two colors and just to go along with finishing my uh, my complete square of white I want to go ahead and do my next um, my next round in white as well just to bring uh, all my squares encircled in white but you can use whichever color you want for the next row so when we were attaching our squares we always used one corner to one corner and uh, we ended that way we lined up all of our our rows evenly you know three by three by three the reason why we did that is because for the next row we're going to be continuing our our uh, basket loop stitch so what I'm gonna do instead of starting in my corner here I'm going to get my white get a little closer here I'm going to get my white and this very corner I have three stitches one is two front double crochets and then the one is the double crochet I made when I made my corner but it's a set of three so I'm going to use this as my three so these were front so I'm going to do back post when, when attaching my yarn so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in like I'm going to do a back post and just slip stitch my yarn on like that. Then you want to chain two and that's going to count as your first back post double crochet. Then yarn over, go into the next one using the post of the next stitch and do your back post double crochet and then again in the next one to your back post double crochet. So now you have your three back post double crochets for this round. And the next three need to be front post because last round they were back post. So you're going to go through the next three stitches will be front post. Just like that. And you're going to continue just like you did with your, your granny square all the places where you have a front post you want to make a back post this time and all the places where you have back post you want to make front post this round just to go keep going with the pattern just like that I just want to show you real quick when you get up to a spot where you've sewn okay when you come up to a, a place here where you've sewn where you have one corner here one corner here and then you have your sew place here how you want to handle those is the first space the first corner space 
you want to do a double crochet. And then the spot here in between where you've sewn them together, it leaves a place where you can put a stitch here, see? So you want to put a double crochet using those. Those, that stitch there. And then the next space in the corner here, put another double crochet. And then your next three stitches here are front post. So you want to do back post. So the next one will be back post. Now, you'll do all your spaces this way. And as you can see, these two are back post this, this time around. And these three double crochets that you just did here will be counted as front post next round. And these are three back post. So it's, you're just going to continue on this path all the way down the side of your blanket. And it should even up for you if you've uh, done all your squares right and you connected in the corners like before. So just continue to do that all the way down and I'll see you back here when you get to the, the corner. Okay, just reach my corner of my, uh, my uh, grain square blanket. And you want to do your corners the exact same way that you were doing them before. You just want to go in, do a double crochet, chain one and do a double crochet and then again you're just going to mimic what you did on this side you did three back posts so you want to do three back posts on this side you just want to continue to do this all the way around and I will see you when you reach all the way back to the first quarter again this is where we started. So I'll see you when we get back to the other round. When you get all the way back to the very beginning, you want to end on this corner like you always do by doing a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Then you want to slip stitch in this top at the beginning, chain two that we did, and then I'm going to change colors. And how I do that is I leave myself a bit of tail to be worked in later, and then I also do the same thing with this. And I'm just going to get my color and slip stitch, not slip stitch, but slip it through the loop. And I'm going to pull the loop to tighten it, to tighten the white. And then you can do the same with the new color as well. Weird to try to do this while I'm on camera but holding it this way. There we go. Now I'm going to chain one, pull up just like I would, just like I did for all these other squares, and then you're going to start off the same way that you did this one using the, the chain, the post. And since we did back post last time, doing the first three is front post and you're just going to continue the pattern just like you did these grannies doing the corners the same way and um, adding the the new double crochet into it just like you did your grannies okay so once you've completed your round of white you want to go ahead and place a marker here so what I did is I went all the way around finished my white round and then I started my next by attaching my, my variegated yarn and I marked my project's first row of my white that I did after the grannies. I'm only talking about after I attached the grannies and I did my first row that went all the way around all the grannies. That was round one with the white and I marked it and then you want to attach your variegated yarn again and then you want to do 19 rounds with the variegated so this is 19 rounds total and then 
I have a total of 20 rounds now and I attached my white and for the very last round for round 21 I did it in white so from this white to this white you have 21 rounds total now once you've done that and you've got to your 21st round you are ready to start attaching grannies again now you need seven grannies on each side. Remember before how we had three on each side and then one in the corners? Now we're going to need seven. Seven granny squares along the top and the sides, all the sides. And then you'll need one for each corner for a total of 32 granny squares. So you can make uh, all your gran 32 granny squares at once or just uh, attach them you know row by row but it's so much easier if you go ahead and you make all of your granny squares at once so that way you can just continue around in one row okay when you're ready to connect your second set of grannies you may notice each granny has five sections so you have five you know three forward, three back, three forward, and there's like five sections of those. But what I want you to do is on the actual blanket itself, count over six sections. So I'm going to count over these first three as being one, then the next three as being two, next three as being three, four, five, six. I want you to go over six. And then at the beginning of the seventh, I want you to to connect your granny square, your next granny square inside the very corner of the granny to the very beginning of the next set here these three. So you're stretching over your five across six and that's what you're going to do through all of your grannies except for one. One of them and I, I'm going to choose one of the middle ones here, I believe it was this one. I'm stretching it over seven. So all of them will be stretched over six except one, which will be stretched over seven. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this one. And I'm going to stretch it to fit. The reason why I do this is because when I had it on just five that had more of a bunching up, you know, between the grannies. So I went ahead and I did to spread it out to six. And then I didn't, I wanted to make this part here just a little wider. So I went ahead and did three more rows. So I ended up having an extra row. But once you've gotten your, your 20, one rows here done completed then you start to connect your granny squares in this way just start from the very corner of the big granny square and the first granny and then you count over six spaces one two three four five six or, or if you feel comfortable with calling these sets so count over six sets and then that's where you're going to stretch it to so you count over six and the beginning of your seventh set here you'll connect it to the corner of the next granny square. Make sure you always get into the corner, it's very important. So like I said, you'll be doing that for all the sides and only one of the granny squares will be stretched over seven sets. Once you have your next set of granny squares connected then you just rewind the video and you do the next set of rows the exact same way that you did between the other two rows of granny squares like you see in this picture. It's going to be one round of white after the granny squares. Then you do your 19 rounds of varig with your variegated yarn. And then for the border of the afghan, you do the one white round to finish. And that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please don't forget to like and share this video. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.